Hey there, in this video I'm going to talk about how to create a graphic settings for your mobile game whether it's Android or iOS. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do is go ahead and right click and create a... Uh, you need to create a user interface widget blueprint and then when you created it, call it something and open it up. The first thing in Unreal Engine 5, the first thing that you have to um, create is to create a canvas panel I'm sure you've already done everything because if you have a hot system in your game you you already have all of this stuff so if you are having a pause button around here or somewhere in your game if it's a button if it's a motion in your uh, in the device then you'll have your pause and then then you'll you're going to have your settings this is where we uh, talk about everything. So I have these graphics in here. So if you come here, you have a button deck, um, button here. You can just drag it into the scene, uh, and you have in this in the appear appearance style normal. You have um, you can go ahead and create some images in uh, Photoshop or Illustrator or anything that you are comfortable with. Um, you can create some button graphics for the buttons that you are creating or you can use the uh, default one in Unreal Engine 4. Um, either way, it's completely up to, up to you. It's a design perspective. Okay, um, but make sure you have the picture for uh, normal hovered and pressed and if they're all the same i usually do it like the normal is the tint alpha is one and in pressed it's less than one so it's like if you press it the player knows where uh when the the, the buttons pressed so that's something to note and when you uh, you if you come down here, you have unpressed. Click on it. I mean, you uh, you'll definitely have it like this. It's like a add button. So add something to it. What was it? So for me, I I usually use it once because I have an animation for all of my buttons. I don't want them to be like you press something something suddenly happens i don't want that I, I want everything to be as smooth as possible so i have a do once you can just type in do once i'm do, it's like the normal do once and i flip flop because um i want it to like i have graphics i press it the this menu comes up and if i press it again this menu uh, closes and I have an animation you can come here you have animation you play you uh, add something you uh, again for example this is just a canvas panel I have three graphic settings high medium and low and three buttons in there so as you can see here I have as I shown you this is the main canvas panel and this is the graphic settings canvas panel I can just go ahead and type graphic settings in here doesn't even matter it what matters though is that we need this one for the animation part so you can uh, add animations click on this one and then I've already um, called it graphics and then you have to add one track which for me the track is this one and then this is the animation I created for it so whenever I press on the graphics, this animation plays. It just has a render opacity, so you can just add track, whatever you want. I added a render opacity and two. Uh, if you've worked with After Effects or uh, Premiere Pro, you know how to do stuff. If you don't know it, uh, it might be a better idea to go ahead and search in Google um, keyframes in Premiere Pro or After Effects then you'll get what I've done in here completely uh, I use the render opacity and a transform in the X value and that's it so this one uh, plays out that animation and then it delays for like a second 
to then reset the do, do once so it once does everything it waits for a second and then it resets so you can do it all uh, again and for the next part of the flip-flop it uh, does the same animation but with this speed of so the playback speed for this one is 0.5 but this one is 1 and it's in reverse and then it delays a little bit because it has to wait for the animation to finish then it can go ahead and do it um, go ahead and reset the do once and when this animation gets created this one comes here sometimes I do it like I change the visibility as well oh I did it here too so the visibility is uh, when it's not in the screen it's collapsed when it's in the screen it's visible so if it's not in the screen we have to make sure that because we're working with touch right so if it's not visible to our eyes but it's set to visible then when you touch that area it doesn't work because it's uh, interacting with the with the widgets okay then once we have all of this let's go ahead into our buttons and see what's inside this is like the normal stuff I always put in my game I don't I mean it's at the end of the day it's just a mobile game you can expose a lot of stuff to the player it's completely uh, up to you but normally I I'd like to have everything as automated as possible and expose some little settings to the player like a high medium and low but you can go ahead and for example you can expose ambient occlusion uh, separately as something I don't know you can go ahead and create another widget blueprint and uh, have something in here that the player can interact with it and uh, choose whether they want ambient occlusion or not or if they could they have the ability to change the quality as well it's completely up to you but this is what I usually use so for the this is low medium and um, high R dot max anisotropy this is like a console command so execute console command r dot max and anisotropy here it's zero for low it's two for medium and it's eight for high it controls the texture quality so uh, zero means that the texture quality the texture streaming is a little bit with less load than this one so everything's a little bit lower quality Ambient occlusion is disabled by the um, for low end devices. I do it. I always do it like this. So if I go here uh, in the the tools platforms uh, and device profiles. You have the ability, for example, you have Android, you have Android here, you have the ability to go ahead and see vars and um, for example in the console variables you can under the rendering this starts with R um, R dot mobile dot dot ambient occlusion quality. Uh, if this is Android low you can uh, add this one to this part so you make sure that if the Android they're using is a low-end Android they won't be able to have uh, mobile ambient occlusion in the settings in the game for themselves unless they come in here and activate it with their own knowledge that this is gonna cost a lot for the game so zero is gonna be for low zero is gonna be for medium as well as it's a high um, uh, the cost is pretty high in this one and one means that it's enabled for the high screen percentage is resolution definitely uh, 60 is pretty performant it's a great number for low and when you com combine it with FSR if you're using FSR it looks amazing so you don't really need to 
worry about this number being too low. 80 is something like medium, 100 is the default value. Don't go over 100, it's going to be really, really expensive. For the low, I usually have FSR disabled, but because it has a little bit of CPU cost, but for medium and high, I have r.mobile.fsr.enabled1, which is it's enabled. Um, material quality. So it's like I I am using some pretty expensive WPO based effects. I want to separate them in low and high. So low and medium won't have the effect, but in the high value I have the effect. So how did I set it up? If I go to the effect I have right right now, I have the quality switch. So if I type in quality switch in the material editor, the high and epic are the value I have, and low and medium are zero. So basically, it has no nothing in it. Um, so zero has nothing. Zero is always low. Three is uh, uh, is either high or epic. So you can go ahead and play around with everything to see if you need two or three or I mean you can you have to go ahead and play around with this one. This this can be really detailed and complicated at times. Uh, for me I, I'm just using it for this effect and And in the wind simulation in my vegetation, um, so all the world position offset effects. And then I usually go get the game user settings, as you can see, get game user settings, user settings. And then I usually set the texture quality and shadow quality, post processing quality, reflection quality visual effect quality, shading quality uh, to 0 for low and then 2 for medium and 4 for high. And then if you have a save system, I mean you have to if you are working on a graphics um, settings system, you need to have a save system as well and you have to uh, save the graphics value so the next time the player put up the game everything loads up and everything gets saved um, you can I mean I don't want to extend the length of this video too much I can't really talk about save system as well it's not hard you can just go ahead and if you don't know how to do it you can just go ahead and um, research it in Google but after this you have to save the system and then every time the player boots the game up or boots the map up you have to load the load everything all together and, and make sure you apply all of them so in my case I am in the level blueprint based on what I have in my save system I have to run the uh, console commands and set all of the uh, game user settings based on the quality, the graphics um, integer I have in my save settings. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I try to make it as short as possible. Um, uh, unfortunately, it got to the point where it's 14 minutes long. I mean, it is what it is. What can we do? Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button and have a great day. Bye.